And I'm not going to tell you how to tell stories because there's no one formula, but um, I just want to give you some tools to help you find unique storytelling devices to help you amplify the story and the message that you're trying to convey. The client was interested in Vivian's decision to start swimming, and I was definitely interested in that too. I wanted to know how do you start swimming when you're blind and you're afraid of water. So after a pre-interview, I was particularly interested in this story that Vivian told me about her first time in the pool. In the interview, I made sure to ask Vivian to really help me paint the scene. So I asked her questions like, how did it feel? What did you hear? What did you say to yourself in your head? She's blind, but for another subject, you could say, what did you see? This is another piece that I made for The New Yorker. Their names are Bill and Matt. This is the first time they ever met, and they are each walking every block in New York City. They aren't doing it together. They just had the same crazy idea. Walking is the best way to see a city. Walking a place is kind of your own way of paying respect to it. Every single part of your body is being used. Your legs, your heart, your lungs, your eyes. If it's hot, you're hot. If it's cold, you're cold. If it's rainy, you get wet. 30 miles a week, 120 miles a month. Maybe 15 to 20 miles each day. The whole city, 6,163 miles. You know what I did? I walked every block in New York City. I'm walking every block in the five boroughs. I was interested in why they walk, like why I do this crazy thing, but also how they walk, because when I was doing pre-interviews with them, I realized that they each have really different reasons why they walk and how they go about doing it, how they go about mapping it. This is a map that I use that has every street enumerated here so that I know where I'm going at all times. We did three walks, one with Bill, one with Matt, and one of them together, and it was the first time that they had ever met. Um, and to kind of give you a behind the scenes photo, the way we did this was that, this is my DP, Eric, and he had a Ronin attached to a steady cam, and so he was walking forward and shooting behind his shoulder. The device supports the focus because they're walking, and it's about walking, and you get to see what they see. Our next subject is the world's oldest mime. And this was my question in thinking about like if you're a mime, you're devoting your life to like essentially a lost art, and that was really interesting to me. This element of silence and like the art of nonverbal communication, we realized like that's really what sets miming apart from all other art forms. The silence is what makes it what we call mime. Hands, face, and body. We made the decision to do an audio-only interview because we didn't ever want to see the mime speak on screen. It made sense to tell his life story through a three-act structure, which, which fits into like the theatrical, performative aspect of his personality and his craft. Um, so that's one device that we used. And then the other device was performative reenactments. The devices actually utilize the art of silent communication. You know, he's actually miming, so it's showing his art form and it plays into the theatrical, performative part of his, his art. There's a silent communication. Hey, look at us, we got here this far. Good luck. <laughs> Our last subject is a blind photographer. Flo has MS, and so she can no longer move her limbs, and so she can't take photos anymore, but she instructs her aides to take photos for her. I was interested in her process, like how does she actually take these photos? What does it look like to be a blind photographer with MS? Hey, Sherry, go to my right. Photograph the three of them. When I first started seeing that texture in front of my eyes, that haziness. Most of my pictures were out of focus, but then came autofocus in 1976. Now that I can't 
hold the camera or press the shutter release button. Whoever I'm with, I say, help, help, quickly, grab the camera, go a little closer, give the lens a hard heart, and I get the shots. One out of 10 are exactly as I wish they would be. Others I have to crop a bit. The main device we use here was sort of another um, kind of crazy idea. I strapped um, my tripod to Flo's wheelchair, and so call it a wheelchair cam. The device here supports the focus because it gets us down on Flo's level to see like what's passing by her on the street. It gets us into her perspective. Another device was using her photos because they're amazing and how could you not use photos in a piece about a photographer. So I use them as sort of transitions and to support the different themes that she's talking about. Your focus can be really simple. It doesn't have to be a really elaborate thing. I often feel like the simpler the better but it definitely should be arrived at only after a lot of really like critical thinking about you know, your subject, like empathizing with them, trying to get in their shoes, um, thinking about what makes them tick.